Welcome to Cyber Church with me, Siobhan Smith, where we experience ministry beyond the matrix. I am so glad that you took time out of your busy schedule to join us on today. May this experience change your life forever. All right, it's time for the word. Do you have your Bibles? Do you have your Bibles? Somebody say, let's go. Give us this good word. Give us this good word. Tonight, I want to, I guess I want to first just read one verse to you. And then we're going to dig into what I believe God has given us for tonight. We're at 123. God bless you all. Keep on sharing it. If you're just tuning in and you have not shared it, shared it. Somebody said marvelous melody. Marvelous. I can't pronounce it. I just see marvelous L-D-Y. How, how I say it? Oh, marvelous lady. Got it. I'm a little slow, marvelous lady. But anyway, thank you for being excited about Cyber Church. I'm excited too. All right. Uh, Psalm 82. Let's go. Psalm 82, the 82nd chapter of Psalm. I want to read just two verses in your hearing. Verses 6 through 8. Verses 6 through 8. Psalm 82. We're going to start at the uh, at the sixth verse, and we're going to read to verse eight. God, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for your word, oh God, that is getting ready to be released, God, into the hearts and into the minds of these, your children. I pray, oh God, that it will penetrate their spirit, and God, that this word will be confirmation, that this word will bring about healing, that this word, God, will do the separating and dividing from those things that do not need to be in our lives. I thank you for the word that gives us us life and I thank you for the word that breaks hard things things that want to be stubborn things that do not want to move I thank you oh God for the word that shall break those things into pieces God give us how to say it give us how to deliver it and God, I pray that we release the word with integrity. I pray, God, that we teach this word, God, in your spirit, that your people will feel your love, God, and they will feel, God, you through the teaching. I thank you, oh God, for the demonstration that will follow your word. And I thank you for the testimony of what you will do because of what is released tonight. We give you glory in in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Psalm the 82nd chapter. And we want to start at the sixth verse and we go to the eighth verse and it says this very quickly. It says, you are God's little G. You are sons of the most high. All of you. Nevertheless, just like any other man, you will die and you will fall like any prince. Verse eight says, arise, O God, and God, you judge the earth for you shall inherit all the nations. I want to read that again. You are gods, your sons of the most high, all of you. Nevertheless, like men, you shall die and you will fall like any prince. Arise, O God, and God, you judge the earth for you shall inherit all the nations. I want you all to type in the comments or if somebody is around you, you're watching it together. I want you to point your finger to them and tell them you are not God. You are not God. Come on, Facebook, tell IG, you're not God. IG, tell Facebook, you are not God. I want you to point to yourself and say this, I am not God. And I want you to find somebody around you and tell them the same thing. You are not God. We were watching, I think it was last week, and I haven't been able to shake it, Um, this show called All American. How many of you all watch All American? My children uh, put me on to this show and I actually really like the show. I, I, you know, I think the show is catered more to young adults and those who are like in high school and those who are in college, but the show deals with so many, um, real life issues. It, it deals with 
current situation that's going on in the world today, that's going on in our communities, that's going on in society that, you know, it deals with relationship issues. It talks about, you know, the race issues. It deals with those who are, you know, perf um, high performers as it relates to athletics. I mean, it covers so many different areas. And the last episode I saw um, Spence, who's the star of the show, was having a conversation with a young lady that he was dating, and I think her name was Leah. And he ended up breaking up with Leah because he really had feelings for another young lady by the name of Olivia. And so he goes to Olivia, up uh, to Leah, you know, he's trying to, to, to apologize because he hurt Leah's heart. You know, he, he, you know, he dated her for a while and she feels like she's been led on, you know, and now you've dropped me to pretty much date my best friend. And she said something in this show that stood out to me and the Lord began to minister to me on what she said. She said to him, she said, you know, Spencer, you have such a really big heart. She said, and you know, you, you don't mean to hurt anybody. She said, but that same heart that you have is the same big heart that's going to get you in trouble. And I said, wow, wow. How many of us have this, this, this heart and this desire to, 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 uh, uh, uh want to be the fixer, to want to be the changer, to want to be the helper. And, 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 and you do it so much that now your heart is used against you. And there are many of us just like Spence in this show that has the savior complex. The savior complex. And so tonight, this word is for those of you that carry and embody this, this, this Messiah complex, this, this, this Christ complex, this, this desire to be the answer, this desire to be the problem solver. And I believe that a lot of us, you know, who are in Christ and those of us that have accepted the assignment of working for God and those of us that have accepted, you know, the, 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 the mandate to change the world. Many of us have literally taken on that mandate as if we have to do it on our own. And so what has happened, you've taken the word where it says that we're called to, 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 to look for, look for. The mission is to set captives free. The mission is to open up blinded eyes. The mission is to set at liberty those who are bound. The mission is to minister to the bruised. The mission is to be the hands and the feet of Christ on the earth. The mission is to feed the hungry. The mission is to, you know, uh, uh, compel men and women to come. And so we read the word and we take that word and we take it literally. And we don't understand that many of us have, have though good intentions. And though, um, we feel like we're doing the will of God, we're actually not walking in the spirit of Christ, but we're walking in the spirit of the savior complex. Okay, what is the savior complex? Let me help you tonight. The savior complex is when you feel responsible for helping and for saving others, even if it's at the detriment of you and other people. Did y'all hear what I said? It's this need to have to be the one to fix it. And if you're not fixing it, if you're not uh, putting your two cent in it to figure out a solution, if you're not lending the money, if you're not giving the wisdom, if you're not counseling, if you're not picking them up, if you're not housing them, if you're not uh, being patient with them through their journey, you don't feel like you're doing the will of God. You don't feel necessary. You don't feel relevant. You don't feel spiritual. You don't feel anointed. And the word of the Lord to you all tonight is this. You are not God. God did not call you to be the savior. 
God has called for us to do what? Be workers together with him. He laid down his life. He never wanted us to lay down ours. He paid the ultimate price. It was never his desire for us to pay that price. Am I talking to anybody tonight? So you operate in this savior complex, um, commonly, commonly known as the Messiah complex or the Christ complex. And you want to be the savior of mankind. What I first want you all to do is to really take an inventory and self-evaluation as to why you do what you do. And I want you to ask yourself. Do you genuinely love helping people or do you love how it makes you feel? You helping everybody. You are helping everybody. You, 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 are, you involuntarily put yourself in situations to fix stuff that you ain't even called to fix. You, you put yourself and you go look for problems. You go look for issues. You attract dysfunction. Who am I talking to? And you equate this to, I'm just doing what God has called me to do. I want you to know that you are not assigned to everybody. And many of you, you're worn out. You're burnt out. You have felt taken advantage of. You have felt used and underappreciated and devalued. Why? Because you have taken on assignments that God has not called you to take on. You have taken on people. That God has not assigned you to take on. You have taken on problems that God ain't given you the solution to take on. And some of you, the Lord told me this to share with you. You are trying to remove people's consequences because you're playing God in their life. Stop removing people's consequences. There are some people that need to go through their processes. There are some people that need to go through disappointment. There are some people that God is making them have to lose all their resources. And here you go being God lending money. There are some people that God is saying, I want you to just trust me. I don't want you to be able to call Siobhan. I don't want you to be able to call Pastor Lewis. I don't want you to be able to go to Vicki Kemp. I'm allowing them to be busy where they can't answer your phone call. And so when you don't hear from them, you call them. Why? Because that's where you feel relevant. That's where you feel empowered. That's where you feel necessary. We need to go back to not trying to be the savior, but go back to being the servant. Go back to God. What is it that I'm called to do to bring you glory? Because God ain't obligated to honor and bless nothing that he ain't ordained for us to do. I'm talking good today. and Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all not saying nothing. I said you carry the savior complex. You want to be God in your, in your family. You want to be God on your job. You want to be God in your relationship. You want to be God in your children's lives. You want to be God to your neighbors. You and everything. You all over the place. You are not God. And you need to take your hands off of what God is doing. The reason why God can't work on your husband is because you're in the way. And the reason why God can't send you the right one is because you feel obligated to stand with somebody that has an issue that don't want to be free. And because you're the savior, you're going to make them be who they're supposed to be. Oh, I don't hear nobody saying nothing. Yeah, because you're the savior. You're going you're gonna to change everything that's wrong. You're going to heal them of their childhood hurts. You're going to heal them of their mental stability. Yeah, you, you, you're going to be the psychiatrist. You're going to be the counselor. You're going to be the pastor. You're going to be the bank. You, 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 you're being everything because you suffer with the savior complex. I'm talking right. Let's go. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew 
Somebody say Matthew. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Is this, is this ministering to anybody? Is this helping anybody tonight? Because y'all, they say, I can't hear y'all tonight. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Y'all said y'all was excited about church and I don't hear nobody saying nothing. What, what's happening? Because Siobhan, you can't hear them. That's why. You own cyber church, girl. All right. Let me talk to you about this uh, 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 savior complex. And then I want us to go to Matthew, the 13th chapter, but let me just read some stuff for you. Cause this going to hit some of y'all, you know, deep, deep down because anybody never told you that you got a complex. You feel good about yourself. You feel like, Oh, I just help everyone. And I am a ph philanthropist. And you know, wherever I go, I feed the hungry and you know, whatever I just, whatever I see, there's a need. I'm going to meet the need and you broke down and you want healthy and you got my, grain headaches and your house is lacking what needs to be done in the house because you are out there being thank you for the seed i receive it you're out there being everything to everybody and you are wondering why you're not seeing things in your life happen it's because you're sowing seed into ground that's not fertile it's because you're casting your pearls before swine it's because you're trying to do good to people who don't even honor you nor respect you or will receive what you're trying to give them it ain't so much for them it's about you it's about the complex you have because of what you didn't get when you was a child and so because your mother did not give you certain things you are overcompensating for it because your father did not give you certain things that you needed you are overcompensating for it in how you deal with people and it's being camouflaged and it's being covered up by the good that you're doing but the Lord wants me to tell you that it's not bringing him glory because you're operating in a complex and not by his spirit. Matthew, wait, before Matthew, let me read this. If you are codependent, you have a savior complex. Weakness and vulnerability are what attracts you. So now I want you to take a look at your circle. Thank you for the seed. This good teaching. Thank you. I want you to take a look at your circle. I want you to take a look at those who are around you. I want you to start looking now at those you spend most of your time with. I want you to really be honest right now with where you spend your time. What you spend your time doing. Is everybody around you weak? Is everybody around you broken? My cash app is Lady Siobhan. Is everybody around you uh, going through? Is everybody around you looking for jobs? Is everybody around you, uh, you know, they, they ain't got nowhere to go. They, they're displaced. They're stray cats. Some of y'all love picking up stray cats. Who are stray cats? Folks that come out of nowhere. They, you, you can't trace them. You don't know where they come from. Yeah, where, where, where you come from? Who can vouch for you? Where's your family? Oh, my whole family just, just, just rejected me. I don't have anybody. I don't have a mother. I don't have a father. I don't have any sisters. I don't have any brothers. I don't have any. Y'all better watch out for folks like that. They know exactly who to come to. They know exactly who to draw to. They drawn to you because you want to be little Jesus. And you need to be careful because the enemy could be sending these people not for you to help, but they're there to drain you dry. They're there to suck the life out of you. You're helping them, but it's hurting you. Tonight, the prayer needs to be, God, help me. My heart needs help. My heart needs help. Because this heart here is getting me in trouble. This heart has me in situations I should not be in. This heart of mine has my bank account being depleted. And I'm not seeing the, 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 the harvest from where I'm sowing. Who am I talking to? My heart needs your help, God. I need you to give me discernment. I need you to lead me where to go, 
where to sow, where to spend my time, where to release my words, where to sow my money, where to get my wisdom, where to pray from a distance, and when I need to be right up front and be there to pray with them. I need wisdom, when to be there and when to remove myself. My heart needs your help. I realize that I am stopping people's consequences. I am messing up their process because I am in the way. I'm trying to be God while you're trying to work on my husband. I'm trying to be God while you're trying to work on my wife. I'm trying to be God while you're trying to deal with my children and teach them a lesson. Here I go again, being the rescuer. Here I go again, bailing them out of the situations that they got themselves into. Who am I talking to? You're not God. You're not God. And it's time for you to let God be God in people's lives. And you just be the servant. Go from trying to be the savior to being the servant. So, weakness and vulnerability, they attract you. You are obsessed with helping others and you will make personal sacrifices to resolve another person's problem. Even if no one asks you and even if you have a choice not to, you will never put yourself first. You know why? Because you're afraid of rejection and you cannot handle being alone. I told you, it goes back to a deficit that you have. It goes back to a void that we're trying to fill. It ain't about the people we're helping. It's about the fact that we were rejected. That we were abandoned. That those that were supposed to do certain things for us, those that were supposed to be a part of our lives, they did not do what they were supposed to do. And so we have this void. And so we're overcompensating and filling the void with now trying to be to everybody what we did not get. I'm talking good. I'm losing my voice. I'm talking so good. You're obsessed. You're obsessed with helping people. You're obsessed when people didn't even ask you to help them. When you have a choice to lay back and say, you know what? Nah, I'm going to let God do it. You intentionally put yourself in a situation to be the fixer. What's the motive? Why are you doing it? Did God tell you to do it? Or it's because it's making you feel good. Did the spirit of God unction you to do it? Or is it because it's, it's filling a deficit that you have in your personal life? Ah, oh, you are not a person. You are a function. You serve the needs of others in your family, whether it be your children, whether it be your spouse, whether it be your parents, and in your life, you find your source of meaning by what you do for them. Here is your slogan. It feels good to make others feel good. Ooh, I'm talking to me too. I told y'all cyber church hits me first. Y'all hear me? Here's our slogan. Here's the mantra. It just makes me feel good to make others feel good. And you're wearing yourself out. Hey, you find it hard to pursue a relationship that promises a stable, secure attachment with a person or a partner that is problem free. You don't feel right with somebody who don't have an issue. You're not comfortable being around people who don't need you. Thank you for the seed, baby. Thank you. 
And she put beside it, I am not God. I am not God. Something is going to break off of you all tonight. That spirit, uh, 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 that, 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 that need to be needed. That, that, that the root of rejection is going to be broken tonight. The desire to be God. That's going to be broken tonight. And you will only go and do what you're assigned to do. And you will only go where you're assigned to go. And you will not feel bad about, about not coming to everybody's rescue. You will not feel bad about saying, I can't do it. You will not feel bad about saying, I don't have it. You will not feel bad about saying, I don't want to. You will not feel bad about saying, you know what? You're draining. And it's draining me of my peace. It's taken away from what I'm called to do. Actually, you're a distraction. Am I talking to anybody? That will be broken tonight. You will not walk in the complex of trying to be God. And you will put God, you will put those people back where they belong. And that is with the Lord. And you will go from savior to servant. To working with God and not trying to be God. Matthew 13. Verse 53. Thank you for the seed, sis. I love you, Fondria. I never call you Fondria. I love you, Lynn. I love you. I love you, sis. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Is this blessing anybody? I know it's hurting. I know I listen. I know. Because guess what? It stood out to me because God was trying to get a message to me. You got to know that God speaks in different ways. It's not always audible. God can use a stranger to speak to us. God can use a song to speak to us. In this instance, God used all Americans to minister to me. And that one line, you got a big heart, Spencer, but that big heart is going to get you in trouble. That big heart keeps you obligated to people that you need to maybe disconnect from. So tonight, God is using cyber church to speak to you, especially those of you who are called to people, especially those of you that are assigned to minister. Just because you're called to minister, just because you're called to people, just because you're in the service field still don't mean you're called to everybody. Matthew 13 verse 53. Somebody got it. I'm receiving seed and I, and I thank you all. It is a good word to sow on. This is a good word to sow on. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Do y'all have it? Somebody say, I got it. Somebody say, I got it. If you didn't share it, go ahead and find somebody else that has the savior complex and tell them you must hear this because see, you love to bring folks in your house. You love to pick up every stranger on the street. You love to give everybody your money. And, 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 and you just feel like you're doing the will of the father. But then the next breath you broke, you can't do what you called to do. That ain't bringing God glory. You give it bill money to other folks and there's a deficit in your house. You, you, you're clothing other children and your children are lacking at home. I don't hear y'all. You giving yourself all to him. And you got to go to the doctor because you got ulcers. And you have fibroid tumors because you're stressed out. And he's sleeping good. Snoring. Everybody got a place to stay. They just took up all the space in your house. And you on the couch. And you're mad about it, which lets you know that you really ain't supposed to be doing what you're doing. Because when it's led by God, guess what? You ain't going to have no regrets. When it's spirit led, it's going to bring you joy and not grief. I'm talking right. When it's God ordained, there's a grace for you to handle people's problems. So it does not overtake you. It does not overwhelm you. And you will see the fruit of it. 
You will see the change in their life. That's how you know you're assigned there. That's how you know you're called to them. That's how you know the, the, the seeds that you're sowing is on fertile ground because you're going to see a harvest. All right. I just said Matthew 13, 20 times. Y'all got it? Matthew 13, 21 times. Verse 53. And. All right. So I'm going to read the NIV version. When Jesus had finished these parables. The Bible says, and he moved on from there. Now peep this. Coming to his hometown, he began teaching the people in the synagogue and they were amazed. And they began to question, where did this man get this wisdom? And where did they get these miraculous powers? And then they began to say, isn't this the carpenter's son? I, I, isn't this man right here that we're seeing operating in miracles and the same man that we're seeing operating in this wisdom, the same man that we're seeing changing lives. Isn't this Joseph's boy? I, I, isn't this the, 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 the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother's name Mary? And isn't he uh, 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 the brother of James? Huh? Joseph? Simon? It, 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 ain't these his folks? James and Simon? This is the same man? Aren't, aren't his sisters right here with us? So when did this man get all of this? This is the people, y'all, that are in the crowd that are having a discussion with who he, who he, come, where he came from and who he used to be. And they're questioning among themselves, this same man that's operating in these powers and with all this wisdom, isn't this the carpenter's son? Ain't his sisters right there? Ain't his boys, James and, and Peter and Simon? Isn't he the one that, 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 you know, that, that, that has a, 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 a background of being a carpenter's son? And the Bible says in verse 57, and they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is without honor except in his own town and in his own home. And here it is, verse 58. And he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. If Jesus understood that I'm not going to be fruitful here, I'm not going to cast my power and my wisdom here amongst these that don't even honor who I am. If he understood to shake the dust off his feet and keep moving, why can't you? Why can't I? So while we thinking we operating and doing what Jesus did, the Bible just told us that he did not perform many miracles there. Why? Because of their lack of faith. They did not believe in him. And without faith, you can't please me. You can't please my father. I dare not come and release blessings and miracles and goods and the power of God upon you when you don't even honor who I am. It's fruitless. It is not fruitful. It won't bring my father glory. It will be an exercise in futility. I'm talking good. So why y'all still trying to question where I came from, who my mama is, who my sisters are, who my circle is, I'm out. Because I understand that even if I try, it will not be effective. Because I get that I am not assigned to everybody. 
Oh, oh, this is hard. This is hard. Oh, I just, I just feel like I'm just supposed to help everywhere. And you giving money to folks that ain't going to do nothing with it. You ain't taught them how to fish. You keep giving them money to go and buy the fish. And guess what? As soon as the fish run out, they're going to come right back and ask you for more money. Because you're sowing into ground that's not fruitful. Teach them how to fish so that you won't become the enabler. Come on, say it. I will not be the enabler anymore. I will not empower other people's lameness anymore. Say it. For those of you who this word is for, it's not for everybody, but it's for those of you that, that, that feel like you got to be the fixer. It's for those of you that just want to help. I want to change the world. I am called to be the world changer. Oh, that's my thing. I'm called to change the world. Well, Siobhan, you're one person. You're going to kill yourself trying to change the world. You can't be out here doing ministry and they got to be in the bed four days because your body broke down. Ooh. You don't wore yourself out, little girl. You don't wore yourself out. And they go on and you got to be laid up in your bed for days to build your strength and stamina back up. Because you just stepped outside of, uh, 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 of the, of the, of the, whatever, what's this? The boundary. You just stepped outside of, of, of the, of the, what, the, 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 the license, the liberty that God has called you to operate in. You don't went past what he told you to do. You have done too much. So helping them at the demise of you is not God. Helping them get their peace while it disrupts your peace is not God. Lending them while it's not putting you in a situation to beg is not God. Building them at the sake of you having a compromise is not God. I'm going to wait around. I'm going to fix him. I'm going to be patient. He didn't have a father. So I'm going to just wait there. Because I just I believe that this is who God called me to be with. Stop putting God in it. You just lonely and you want a man. And so you're willing to take anything. Instead of letting God do the work in him. Instead of even seeing if he wants God to, to do the work in him. You don't know because you in the way. Jesus felt their spirit. The Bible says that they took offense at him. They had a problem with him. And you think that he's going to go and, and cast out blessings? Oh, no. No. And call me what you want to call me. Talk about me if you want to. He healed them. Why he didn't heal us? He looked out. He opened up their eyes. Why he didn't open up our eyes? Because y'all was just talking about me. That's why. I'm giving y'all a Bible. He only did what the father released him to do. He only did what the father told him to do. And clearly, his father said, get out of there. There are some places I am not going to go. There are some places, I'm not. There are some people that's going to call for help. I've been there with y'all all along. I live in Virginia all of my life. Preaching the gospel. They know who I am. They wait for me to look, move to New Jersey. To now keep calling me to come minister and preach. So for me to go wear myself out. I'm going to always be transparent. To go wear myself out. 
and labor with people who already know who I am and already know what God put inside me. And now y'all got this revelation. We need Siobhan to come. Y'all had me there for 50 years. I'm not. I'm only going to go where God tells me to go. I'm not. You didn't honor me. And I'm not going to kill myself going to places. I'm not going to be effective. I don't hear nobody saying nothing. You're not God. I'm not God. And tonight, God wants to break the Savior complex off of you. Do you all hear what I'm saying tonight? This Messiah complex, this Christ syndrome, where you want to be the one and is leaving you at a deficit, is leaving you broken. Is leaving you questioning, should I have done that? Should I have sown that? Should I have gone there? When you got to question it, you shouldn't do it. When your spirit feels like, um, uh, I'm not at peace with it. Don't do it. If you don't see the change, don't keep sowing in, in, in places where there's no change going to take place. You got to be honest about why you're doing what you're doing. Because while many of them don't want the help, they want the attention, you like the attention too. You like it. It makes you feel like something. It is, it is dealing with and exposing that pride that's there. Pride ain't always, you know, seen in arrogance. And haughtiness. Pride is seen in false humility. Yeah, I just had to help them. I just had to do it. I just wanted to give. I just wanted to sow. I, I just, you know, I just believe that I'm the one that's called to, to change it. If I go, I'm going to fix it. If I say it, it's going to turn. Savior complex, savior complex, Messiah complex. You are not God. Say it, say it. I am not God. Come on, say it. Forgive me, God, for trying to be you. Come on tonight. You got to get set free. Come on. I will no longer get in your place, God. I will no longer try to stop people's consequences because I'm standing in the way. I will no longer, I will no longer enable people in their issues. I will no longer be an encourager to people to stay in their mess so that I can continue to be the helper. Come on. I'm not God. I'm tired. I'm tired of doing it. It is wearing me out. I don't feel good about it. It's actually making me angry. It's actually working on my heart. It's making me bitter. Be honest. I'm not God. I can't do it anymore. No, I can't come no more. No, I can't listen to it anymore. No, I can't counsel you in it no more. No, I can't wait for you any longer. Yes, I forgive you, but I'm not staying with you. Who am I talking to? Yes, I forgive you. And I know in time past, I keep giving you chances. But guess what? Time is up. I'm not Jesus. I'm not God. I'm actually human. And so there are some things that Jesus can take on that I wasn't called to take on. That's why he was the savior and I'm the servant. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says for me to be the savior. Psalm 82 again says what? Ye are gods. We're little G's. We are the sons and the daughters of God. But what does it say? 82 verse 6, verse 7. Nevertheless, let me tell you something. You're going to die like men. 
You're going to fall like any prince because you're human. This He was talking to those judges, those that stood in the place of God and they were able to make dis decisions. They, they had the authority to rule and to reign. And the word of the Lord had to come to them to remind them, you, you listen now, you, 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 you're gods. You, 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 you are sons and daughters of God, but you ain't God. And just to remind you, just in case you think that you're like him, let me remind you that you're a man and you're going to die just like any other man. And you're going to fall just like any other prince. Do you all hear me? You are a human. You are a man. You are a woman. You need God just like the people that you're helping need him. We're not any better than anybody else because we have the ability to help others. God has just graced us in areas that he's uh, given us experience in and brought us out of for us to now go and convert and strengthen our brothers. But that comes with asking the Lord, where do I go? Who am I called to go and strengthen? Who am I called to go and give the word to? Who am I called to sow into? What ground are you calling me to be fertile in? You've given me the tongue of the learned. So where am I supposed to release that word? Because if I release it to the wrong ear, it's not going to be fruitful. If I operate in the wrong timing, it's not going to be fruitful. If I operate with people that God has not told me to, 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 to minister to, it's not going to be fruitful. I'm not God, period. When they ask you what happened, you always help. You always come, uh, come to my rescue. What happened? Baby, I'm not God. I want you all to learn to say it. What happened? What happened? You changed up on me. You, you took me back in before. Why not this time? I'm not God. You let me loan, You let me take the money before. Why you tell me no? Because I'm not God. I'm going to leave room for God to do something for you. You ain't stay on the phone with me hours giving me wisdom this time. What happened? It was real quick. You prayed and got off the phone. Because I'm not God. And I can't do what God can do for you. You're not coming. You're not coming to be the one. You're not coming to service us. You're not coming to speak. You're not coming to sow. You're not coming to share. No. Mm -mm. God ain't called me to go to that, to that, to that venue. God haven't called me to this, to this appointment. God ain't called me to this group. God ain't assigned me to this uh, opportunity. Nah. Mm -mm. It's not going to be fruitful. It's going to wear me out. It's going to drain me. And I will no longer walk in a complex that I did not know I had. But now that I've been given the word of the Lord, now that God has given me the truth, the truth has made me free and I'm not going back to what God has freed me from. God, I thank you tonight for these that you have drawn on this cyber church by way of Facebook and Instagram because you wanted to free them from this complex that makes them feel obligated to helping everybody and to being everywhere. Glory to God when you have not assigned them to everywhere. I thank you, oh God, that you have released truth tonight, that you have exposed this enemy that appears as good. You have exposed this spirit that appears as God. It has camouflaged itself in good works when it is really glory to God, the manifestation of pride and self-righteousness and self, uh, uh, self uh, exaltation. I I pray, God, that you will forgive us for uh, exalting and gratifying ourselves by helping other people. 
Forgive us for operating in our flesh and saying it was being led by you. I thank you tonight, God, that you are freeing us. You are setting us free from this need to be needed. You are breaking the spirit. Glory to God that is being driven by rejection and abandonment and the need for validation. I break it now. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, that these on this line, these that are under, glory to God, the sound of my voice will not labor in this any longer. They will no longer be tied and gripped and bound by this demon that is using their good deeds and their big heart to wear them down. We see you, Satan. We see your tactics. We see what you're trying to do. You're trying to use our heart against us, but you are a liar. You have been exposed by the power of God, and I thank you, oh God, that the enemy's plans have been cancel. We will not be sick. We will not be drained. We will not be worn out. We will not be bitter because of our good works, because of our heart for people, because of our love, because of our grace, because of our desire to be long suffering. It will not be something that makes us angry. Hallelujah. But I thank you tonight that you're helping our hearts. And you are ordering our steps. And though we have a big heart, God, we want our heart to be in line with you. We want our heart to be in line with your will. Create within us a clean heart. Purify our motives. Purify our desires. While we do what we do, let the motive be pure. Hallelujah. Let it be genuine. Let it be to bring you glory and not to bring ourselves glory. Hallelujah. Forgive us tonight for operating and for moving and for doing things in our flesh. For doing and for operating and for going and for sowing. Oh God, under the the, uh, uh, guidance of our flesh and our emotions, forgive us for trusting our feelings. You told us to trust not in the flesh because our flesh will fail us. And many of us, we have been led by our flesh and not by our spirit. For you said that those that are your sons and daughters are led by your spirit. Tonight, God, we get back into proper alignment and we are led by you. We're led by your spirit. We're led by your instruction. We're led by your correction. I know. We're led by We're led by your guidance. Our discernment is sharp. Our ears are clear. Our sight is clear. We will follow you every step of the way. If you say no, we won't do it. If you say no, we won't sow it. If we say no, if you say no, we won't say it. We yield to you tonight. And we thank you for breaking the savior complex off of us. May we never become captive again. May we never become a slave again to the demon, to the devil and his plan to keep us hostage to man. Which keeps us glory to God away from staying tied to you. Tonight, God, we're at one with you. We're at one with your will. We're at one with your purpose for our lives. We're at one with what you've assigned for us to do. And nothing that is in your will, we will be drawn or enticed with. No one that is not uh, aligned with your will for us, will we be drawn or enticed by. Glory to God. Our heart is aligned to your word. And we think that your word is a light unto our feet. And it is a lamp unto our path. We bless you tonight for this word. And we thank you for freedom and joy in the Holy Spirit. If you receive this word tonight, just say, I receive it. I receive it. And just thank God for liberty. Thank God for freeing you. Come on, thank God. Thank God for giving you the truth. 
Hallelujah. Come on. Thank God tonight for letting you know, hey, it's okay to not be the savior. That's why I have my son. It's okay for you to not run and try to be Superman everywhere. That's what I have my son for. You're just called to be my servant. You're just called to work along a side of me to demonstrate my love and power here on the earth as I lead you to go. Thank you, Lord, for the word. I bless you, God, in Jesus' name. If you have not sown, I want you to go and sow now. I believe that this word is, 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 is worthy for you to sow seed. I don't believe that we should just receive a word and not respond to the word. Many of you have responded already, but if you have not, and this word has blessed you. Do not log off this live. Do not log off this live without at least sowing a seed and saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you for speaking to me by way of this platform. Thank you for speaking to me by way of this woman. Thank you, Lord. I had to hear it. I had to hear it. It didn't feel good, but you gave me the word. You love me so much that you gave me just what I needed. And because I receive it, I sow into it. I sow into it. I sow into it. If you've sown tonight, just let me know. I've sown. I've sown. I've sown. Thank you, Lady Vicky. I received the seed. I've sown. I've sown. I receive it. And I have sown. I have sown. This word was for me. I love you, Regina. You minister tonight. And you're back on here sowing. God bless you. Just let me know that you've sown. I want to say thank you, God. I thank you tonight for these that are sowing into this word. I thank you, God, for these tonight who are lovers of truth. And God, because they received the word gladly, they are now releasing seed. Cause this seed to yield forth a harvest, God. Let them see the difference of sowing into fertile ground as opposed to sowing in ground that is dry and hardened. Hallelujah. God, I bless you tonight for these that are responding at the sound of my voice. Let them see the blessing of obedience in sowing when you unction them to sow. And God, may they never lack. May they not struggle. I thank you, oh God, for this liberating freeing word that you've released to them tonight. May they never go back to that. But may they walk in freedom, may they live in freedom, and may they stay free in Jesus' name. I bless you all. I thank you for seeing. This will be back on at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. For those of you that are saying I need to hear it again and I need to let others hear it, it will be back on at, on Facebook at 10 p.m. Make sure that you share it and make sure that you encourage others to hear the word of the Lord. I love you all. Thank you for sowing, Lynette. Thank you, Queen Fears. Thank you all for sowing. Those of you on Facebook, I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya, for sowing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lady Vicky, for sowing. Thank you, Watina, for sowing. Thank you, Courtney, for sowing. Hallelujah. Thank you. 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 One Hope 029. Brianna, thank you. Hollywood, Maine, thank you. Thank you for sowing. Thank you for sowing. I love you all. Bless you, Dr. Corporal Boy. I love you. I love you. God bless you all, and we'll see you on next week.